Welcome to the course on RSA signal processing for music applications. This week is the week of the short time free transform. And in the previous programming class, uh, we talked about windows. We talked about how to uh, get a window, how to display it, how to uh, compute its spectrum, and how to visualize the kind of things uh, that we talked about in the theory class uh, related to windows. And now, in this uh, second uh, programming uh, lecture, I want to build the whole short time Fourier transform system and talk about the implementation we have in the SMS tools uh, package. So we will basically be implementing the whole uh, STFT equation uh, shown here. So basically we'll be iterating over a sound, x, and we'll be computing at every frame, so the frame number is L, so we'll be uh, computing frames of uh, the sound. At each uh, frame uh, location we will be multiplying the fragment of sound with the window, uh, W, and therefore at the end we'll have a sequence of spectra, a sequence of uh, in this case, complex spectra. And if we see it as a, as a block diagram, so we start from the signal x of n, we multiply one fragment with our window, so we get a windowed signal. That's what we compute the FFT of, and then, of course, we compute the magnitude and phase uh, representation of the spectrum, and then we can and do the whole process by calling the inverse FFT, therefore obtaining the windowed synthesized sound, and with what we call overlap at uh, strategy, we will be adding together these fragments into a whole signal, and hopefully if we have done the things correctly, especially if we have chosen the window at the hop size correctly, this output signal will be identical to the original. So let's uh, look at the code of the STFT that we have in the SMS tools uh, package. Okay, so it is the file called stft.py and in it we have three functions. One that is the STFT that does the whole analysis and synthesis and then we just uh, have the analysis and synthesis separate so sometimes it's useful. So we have the STFT anal function and the STFT synth function for the inverse part. But let's uh, uh, talk about the complete analysis synthesis, so let's talk about the STFT function. As input parameters, it has the X, the, our array with the complete sound. The, we need to know the sampling rate of that sound. Then we need to pass it the window we're going to be using, W, then the size of the FFT, capital N, and the hop size. How are we going to hop through the sound? And basically the core of the function is a loop, uh, in this case a while loop, that uh, keeps uh, advancing through the sound by a pointer, this pin. Pin is a pointer that keeps advancing by H, by capital H, by the hop size. So pin gets advanced at every iteration by capital H until it reaches the N, which is the N of the sound. And within that, we basically choose the fragment of the sound that we want to analyze. And then we call the DFT anal function. So this is the function that we already uh, discussed uh, last week, which is the DFT model. It comes from the package uh, DFT model, okay, so uh, we don't have to worry now here about the zero phase windowing, about the zero padding, etc. Everything is done within this DFT anal function and uh, it uh, receives the fragment of the sound, the window and the FFT size and it returns the positive side of the magnitude and phase spectra. Okay, after that we can do the inverse uh, uh, DFT, also calling the DFT synth uh, function, and therefore that will return a windowed fragment of the sound, and then we can put it all together, uh, overlap and adding the sound, and creating the overall output array. Okay, and apart from that, the rest are basically initializations and 
ways to better analyze the sound and to make sure that the pointer is uh, can start at the very beginning of the sound and can end at the very end of the sound. So I'm not going to go into detail of that, but please uh, feel free to go over that and uh, understand uh, this code. Okay, so now we have this function, so that returns a, a sound, and let's uh, let's use it. Let's uh, write some code to use this function. So this is a, a little script that I wrote to call the stftnl, in which I first uh, have to uh, get all the packages uh, required, including the, the the actual stft function. So this uh, comes from the models uh, directory and then I can um, get a file define the window and then define the size of the window the FFT size and the hop size and now we can read the file with uh, WAF read get the window and call the STFT function and this will fill up two variables MX and PX which will be including will include the the sequence of magnitude and phase spectra. Okay, so let's uh, let's run it. Let's uh, run test three. Okay, that's quite quick. So it analyzes uh, the sound and it obtains all these variables. So let's uh, go through them. So maybe uh, the first thing uh, we can do is to listen to the sound. So we can just uh, do um, the. Um, the exclamation mark play and the name of the sound which is this uh, flute sound and we can listen to that okay so this is the sound of uh, the flute um, and now we can go through the different variables that we have computed so for example the first one is the sound that we read the X uh, array so this is the whole uh, sound, uh, the array of the whole sound, so it's uh, more than 80,000 samples. Okay, then of course we can plot the window that we uh, uh, computed, which is a humming window. And then uh, we have the output array of uh, magnitude and phases, but those are very big uh, um, variables, they are very big matrices of uh, values. So in fact, if we put mx dot shape, it will tell me the the dimensions of the array, basically the number of frames and the number of uh, samples in the spectrum that we have. So in fact, this tells me that we have 238 frames, and each frame has 512 samples. These 512 samples are the samples of the magnitude spectrum of half of the magnitude spectrum. So now we can access individual frames of that. So if we put, for example, MX, and we access, for example, the, the frame number 50, and we plot the whole spectrum of that uh, 50th frame, these are the values of the magnitude. And of course, we can, if we call the function plot with uh, that uh, variable, we will plot the magnitude spectrum of that particular location. Okay, so this is the flute sound. We see the harmonics and we see how uh, the higher values are much uh, softer and it's quite noisy. Of course, uh, we can also plot the phase spectrum of that uh, same location. And this is the phase, the unwrap phase, so we can see all these uh, nice uh, looking uh, phase shapes. Okay, um, of course, uh, we want to visualize the whole spectrum. So in order to visualize the whole spectrum, the, the plotting command that can do that is uh, what is, uh, the function is called p uh, color mesh. p color mesh, uh, it uh, plots a, a matrix as a kind of a, a three-dimensional shape. So if we give it the p, uh, the mx, it will, basically plot all the frames, uh, but uh, it maybe it plots it in a, in a different way that we are accustomed to, because the vertical axis is the time. So in fact, we see time going from bottom to uh, uh, top, 
and the frequency is on the horizontal axis. In fact, a better way to uh, plot this with color mesh is to transpose it first. So we can uh, call the transpose function. So this will transpose the MX in a different way so that we can see it in a more meaningful uh, way. So now we see time going from left to right and frequency going, or the frame, uh, yeah, frequency going from bottom to uh, top. Okay, so that's uh, basically how we compute uh, the, the magnitude, uh, the phase uh, spectrum using the STFT and how we can plot it. And there is a function uh, file that uh, implements all that and makes uh, plots in a nice way, and that's the STFT underscore function. And this is the one that is called from the uh, graphical interface that uh, we also use. And here it has one function called main, and it goes through the kinds of things we did, and it does both the analysis and synthesis. Okay, so the main has as input values all the input parameters, and then it reads the sound file, it gets the window, it performs analysis, this is exactly what we did now, but then it does the synthesis and it outputs the synthesis uh, file into, uh, into a location with a given name um, and then it writes it. Okay? By the way, um, here this file I just uh, copied into the workspace but I had to change the relative path of a number of uh, these uh, these names. So for example, I have to change the, the path of the software models or I have to change uh, the, the output uh, file name because in here it, uh, it was using a particular directory to store the sound file. So here I just write it directly on, the, on this, uh, on this uh, directory. Okay, so let's uh, execute these. Uh, so I have it in this uh, directory. So it's stft function, so I can just run stft uh, function. Okay, and it plots, uh, well, the input sound, the magnitude, the derivative of the phase, and the output sound. And this has uh, created a file, which uh, is called, uh, mm, what is it called? It's um, called piano stft.waf. And of course, from here again, I can play it. So I can say play stft, uh, stft I know piano piano stft dot waf. Okay, and it's basically the same than the original sound. Of course, now from this. Uh, uh, file, I can really change and uh, make uh, the things uh, differently if I want, uh, so feel free to change how the plots are uh, shown, uh, but this uh, is a quite nice way to plot the things with the correct axis, with the correct labels, uh, with the correct uh, scaling, so that uh, we can better visualize the, the analysis and synthesis uh, using the STFT. And that's all I wanted to say. So. Uh, Basically, we have uh, gone through the, the short time Fourier transform, the implementation of the short time Fourier transform. So make sure that you understand the actual equation and uh, what uh, the, the signal processing considerations that are involved in that. And then, of course, we use a number of uh, packages uh, from Python together with the SMS tools uh, that we have already uh, developed and implement uh, the DFT and the STFT, so we have been calling those functions. And that's all. So with this uh, programming class, hopefully uh, you have uh, gotten an idea of how to implement the STFT and uh, how can we uh, use the functions of the S uh, SMS tools to actually uh, adapt it to our own particular needs. So please uh, feel free to play around with that and make sure that you understand the STFT also from this uh, programming perspective. And that's all. Thank you very much.